All you got to do is memorize the word farm, F-A-R-M, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. That's the way they say it happened. Seems simple enough. Amphibians evolved into reptiles, and reptiles evolved into mammals. But recall that according to phylogenetics, you were always a member of the same clades as your ancestors. So if fish, amphibians, and reptiles are among the ancestors of mammals, then mammals must still be fish, amphibians, and reptiles, right? Well, that's actually a question that's been under some debate. Basically, there are a few options. One is to say that yes, you are a fish, an amphibian, etc. But then, do we need to rename other groups, like modern amphibians, all of which do in fact form their own clade separate from amniotes? Another option is to abandon such terms as formal taxa, and to come up with new taxa that are monophyletic. Another option is to have some kind of compromise, where some taxa are kept but redefined and others are discarded. Before we really get into this, I need to define two terms. The first, which I've already used, is monophyletic. A monophyletic taxon is one that includes all the descendants of the most recent common ancestor of all the members of the group. So, if I define mammalia as all the descendants of the platypus and the pig, then all the things you normally think of as mammals are in the group. And as far as we can tell, that definition of mammalia is monophyletic. The other word is paraphyletic, and it means a taxon that excludes some of the descendants of that taxon's most recent common ancestor. So, since whales are closer to hippos than hippos are to cows or deer, the traditional view of Artiodactyla, that is, the even-toed ungulates, is paraphyletic, because it excludes cetaceans. So what about amphibians? Do we have to rename them since they're paraphyletic if we include the ancient forms that lived and reproduced like modern amphibians? In fact, this has already happened. Modern amphibians are now classified under the taxon Lysamphibia rather than the more ambiguous Linnaean taxon Amphibia. But then, what do we do with all the so-called amphibians from the Paleozoic that are more closely related to reptiles and mammals than Lysamphibians? That's where the concept of an evolutionary grade comes in. A grade is a group of animals united by certain primitive traits, but that does not form a monophyletic group, usually because the grade excludes various descendant groups. So all of Parareptilia, except the actual amniotes, can be called amphibians in the sense of a grade, because they all shared the trait of laying non-amniotic eggs in water that hatched into fry-like young. Other examples of evolutionary grades include pelicosaurs, thecodonts, and remphrinkoids. Pelicosaurs are a group of synapsids, but it does not include therapsids, which is the clade that includes the synapsids with erect limbs. But some pelicosaurs are more closely related to therapsids than other pelicosaurs. Therefore, because pelicosaurs as a group is paraphletic, it's an evolutionary grade. Remphorhynchoids are the pterosaurs that have long tails, as opposed to pterodactyloids, which have short tails. Pterodactyloidea is probably a valid clade, but some ramphorhynchoids are closer to some pterodactyloids than other ramphorhynchoids, so ramphorhynchoidea can't be a valid taxon, but it can be a grade. But why do we have a need for such terms? Well, there are long-term trends in evolution, such as amphibians increasing their adaptations for spending time out of water. And additionally, grades let us restrict the discussion of certain forms in time. For example, if you want to talk about primitive synapsids from before the Mesozoic era, but you don't want to have to actually say primitive synapses from before the Mesozoic era, saying pelicosaurs will do. Grades are informal groupings of organisms, and as such, they tend not to have terribly strict definitions. For example, is Tiktaalik a fish grade or amphibian grade animal? It's hard to say, and it really doesn't matter, because grades are just a form of biological shorthand for a fundamentally unnatural grouping of organisms. On the other hand, the splitting of grades into various groups, such as the splitting of amphibian-grade animals into Lysamphibia and Amniota, can shed light onto the process of evolution, and how various groups modified their more basal anatomy into more derived forms through time. So, did fish evolve into amphibians, into reptiles, into mammals? Well, not in any formal sense, but in a rather more informal way of speaking, yes. The animals on that line from primitive sarcopterygians living as fin-bearing aquatic organisms all the way to humans would have looked like animals that you'd call a fish, an amphibian, and so on. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you hated it, please dislike, tell me why or how much you hated it in the comments, and subscribe so you can tell me I suck all the time. Well, I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Wait.
you're still here? You're one of those beautiful mammals that watches videos all the way to the end, aren't you? Well, in that case, I wanted to let you know that I have a Twitter. It's linked in the description of this video. Also, I want to let you know that if you want to help the channel, you can render for me on Sheepit, which is how I get these videos done. The download link, my username, and my key are all in the description. Just get the Sheepit executable, use my username, and the key as your password. Let me know if you do render some for me, and I'll shout you out in a video.